Hey, y'all. Welcome back to another episode of Making Moves. I'm here today with one of my dear friends, Miss Haley Ringo Price. Hi. I'm so excited. This is my first time. Thank you for having me on. That's crazy. It's your first time. Welcome to the show. I know. I know. Well, I, um, I'm i honored to be here with you and just talk shop today. Do whatever we want to do. Same. I can't believe that your name is Haley Ringo Price now. Like, that feels so weird to say out loud. I know. I know. We just, I just went through all the... I was telling you this briefly, but I'm going through the whole name change thing, which is a nightmare. But... It is going out. My social security card changed. So it is basically, I'm official. I've heard it's such a pain in the ass. It is. But I found this company on Etsy. And basically they do like, it's a, I think it's called like namechange.com. I mean, honestly, something so generic. But they basically, you pay like 35 bucks. They give you a PDF of everything. You put in all your information. And they give you a PDF of like what you need to fill out. And it, they make it super easy. So that's what I did. Oh, it's like instructions, I'm, kind of. Instructions, yeah. So like your, because you have to do your social security card, your driver's license, like all your banks, all your, literally everything, which is a nightmare. And I would have no idea what to do. And of do. course the woman, the woman has to do it. Yeah, of course the woman has to do it. Like they have to do every, we have to do everything. <laughs> no, we are just far superior then. We have to carry their children. <laughs> oh we have to take their last name. Oh my God. It's just, yeah, we carry the burden of the, the world. Yeah, we carry the weight and of the relationship. Because, but it's because... Like, you know, the universe knew that men couldn't do it. But yeah, exactly. I'm kidding. I love men. I love you guys. But um sort of. But we are <laughs> definitely superior. So Okay, well, for someone that doesn't know who you are, obviously I talk about Haley all the time on the pod and off the pod. She's one of my really good friends. But why don't you do a little intro of yourself yes yeah like where are you from okay yeah oh perfect um i'm originally from texas mm -hmm. the same no texas um, <laughs> love it and i moved went to ut in austin then i moved hook em. hook em horns baby then i moved to nashville for a hot second and then i moved to la in 2017 was there until like a year and a half ago right two years ago two years ago two years ago and then so now i live in nashville lived there for two years i love it but we're moving to Denver for my husband's company, and then I'm actually going to be moving back here part time. Thank God, because I missed you guys so much. I'm ready to be back in my like creative girly pop space with y'all. So I can't wait to have you like on speed dial just to hang out with, I know, like I know. in real life. Because I, I feel like we talk quite a bit. Yeah. For like you living so far away, we talk quite a bit. Yeah. No, we do. And also, like even the other night, we all went out to Babel, 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 Babel. I say. Bavel. Oh my God. Okay. Bavel. Bavel. Well, I'm from Texas, so we say Bavel. But I don't know if I'm saying it right. No. It's um, either Bavel or Bavel. I think it's Bavel. I think Bavel sounds chicer, so we're going to go with Bavel. Bavel. Um, we, even when we went to Bavel the other we're night, lilies. it was just so nice being back with all the girls. Like, I miss that so much. And um, yeah, it made me so nostalgic. And even all the people that were at my wedding, that y'all know they were DMing me and they were like, wait, I have FOMO. Like, I want to be there because it's Aww. just such a good, I feel like we have such a solid girl group, yeah. like girl gang, which I'm so thankful for because what the fuck would I do without my girlies? Um, mm -hmm. So yeah, I'm excited to move back here part time and be back in the swing of things. And I miss the fast paced lifestyle that LA has. So ready to get grinding. What do you mean fast paced? Tennessee like Nashville specifically is a huge music industry. So I'm not saying people don't work hard there. People work their asses off in, in Nashville, but mm -hmm. it's a lot more, I mean, it's the South. It's a lot more chill, calm. People are a lot more chill, a lot nicer typically. Mm -hmm. um, the traffic is less great. It's just a lot more calming mm -hmm. to live, but more also, space, more space, but also there's not this like overall sense, like in LA and New York specifically, like specifically LA, people are here for a reason. So mm -hmm. you have a lot of transplants. They're here to like, you know, be successful whatever that could be whatever they're doing in nashville a lot of people are from there originally never left or like are there for music but it's just more chill so i miss the grind mm -hmm. and i miss being around people like you guys that are also working all the time i mean it can get exhausting but i miss the it, it encourages me and it like spurs mm -hmm. me on to work harder so mm -hmm. i told you that like the first day i was here i was like god tk is working on a sunday which i don't miss but also <laughs> i'm like this inspires me and i need to you know get it popping yeah. So. Every time I go home, I deal with the same thing. I feel I like I'm, I was about to. I feel like I'm a slob. Like yeah. every time I go home, yeah. And it's just because I'm relaxing, which is should be normal. Yeah. But in LA, there is this hustle and bustle about it that is awesome, and it really makes you perform to it, the best of your abilities. Like yeah. it, it makes you 
grind and do things you wouldn't normally do, yeah, which is 100%. awesome when you're surrounded by people that are, you know, trying to be the best they can as well. Yeah. Yeah. And it's just it's just a different culture here mm-hmm. than it is in Nashville. And one's not better than the other. I just missed this one. Mm-hmm. So it's nice being back. What are some things that you really enjoy about living in Nashville? The food. Mm-hmm. My God, I live in East Nashville. So the that's like the food scene. And my husband, Brian and I are, you know, this like such foodies. Mm-hmm. And so I have um that's all we do is like go out and eat and that's you know there's live music I love that about Nashville the live music's incredible the people are so kind I've made some really good friends there as well who I love dearly and um yeah I just think it's more like it's more wholesome Mm -hmm. (laughs) you know if you like want to raise kids and have a family Nashville's a great place to do that and we do want to do that obviously I do want kids one day but I am not ready mm-hmm. fully. Speaking of your husband, Brian. Yes, my angel baby, the love of my life. I want to talk a little bit about your guys' relationship. Yes. And, I mean, you're literally married now, yes. but it was not an easy path to getting here. No, it was not. And uh, I want to talk about it because I feel like a lot of the girlies mm-hmm. and the dirty forkers that, you know, follow and listen to this podcast yeah. are in their mid-20s. They're trying to find their person. They're in situationships. They're doing the thing. They're putting themselves out there. They're on the apps, whatever. Yeah. And I think your story is so good for people to hear because it's it wasn't all rainbows and butterflies. Yeah, not at all. Um, no, and I haven't talked about this on like in depth on a podcast yet or really in public at all. So let's yeah, we can get let's into dive in. It. So Haley, how did you meet your husband, Brian? So I met Brian. I was shooting a wedding. I've been a wedding photographer for 12 years. And I was shooting one of my friend's weddings that I went to high school with who he played um, lacrosse with at Air Force Academy. And so I was photographing this wedding. It was a wild wedding. Like the people were going crazy. So I was not in the mood. I was in work mode. I was like, I don't want to talk to men. But one of my family friends was there. A lot of them were there. And she came up and she was, you know, like, you have to meet Brian. He's my favorite one of Nate's friends. Um, who is another friend from home. And basically, Brian just stood there and was like, from my recollection, like really awkward. But He was he, just a guest at the wedding? He was just a guest at the wedding. Was he a groomsman? No, he wasn't a groomsman. He was just a guest. He okay. was just a guest. But he was in his um, dress uniform, like their their Air Force uniform or whatever. Okay. And um, he was just like very formal, very proper, um, kind of shy. And he's like 6'2", so he's like tall. But he was like obviously very good looking. So I'm like, who is this slightly like awkward man, not really talking, you know, whatever. That's how we met. But then... So the family friend was like, oh, Haley, you need to meet Brian. She was like, he's my favorite one of Nate's friends. And she was trying to set him up. What did he set? Well, Brian actually had gone to her and asked to be introduced. But I didn't know that at the time. Okay. Um, He literally didn't say much. Like, I'm not kidding. He he just, from my recollection, just stood there like... Because she was... You know when someone's introducing somebody and they're like going on and on about all their qualities? And it's awkward because you're like... Yeah, that's true. Like, what do you say? Yeah. So he, he knowing him now, that like he was just uncomfortable and like slightly awkward. But um, but I get it. So then basically he asked me to dinner that night, but I was working and so I was trying to be professional and I was like, I don't go. I'm not gonna. I don't go on dates with people like clients essentially. And he was like, Well, I'm not a client. And I was like, Well, we're at a wedding, so no. Um, and then the next day, this is what I was telling that's like you. Ballsy. He's very ballsy. You know, Brian, like once you... Yeah, I know, but I'm just thinking like, yeah. how old were you guys too? So I was 26 and he was 28. He's two years older. Okay. So, so yeah. So at the wedding, like at what point in the wedding was he like, I want to take you to dinner? Well, he had seen me at the church and he like, I had my both cameras on me and he thought I was like just older and like, he thought I was like in my 30s, which I was like, okay, I would normally take that as an offense, but he meant it in like the way I carried myself. So okay. I was like, okay. And then at the... Towards the end of the reception is when he asked me out, like when I met him. And he wanted to get dinner that night? No, 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 not that night. Just like later. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. So then we, um, so then, but I said no in a nice way. Um, But then the next day, and I told you this, I was like, and for girls everywhere, guys everywhere, like if you want to meet people, you got to like go out of your house (laughs) and like do things. And I was kind of like going through a depressive state. I was like dating. I was talking to a few people on dating apps, but nothing was serious. I was like over men. I'd gotten out of a relationship that I wasn't happy in. And I was just like, kind of like that. And I remember I I was crying to my mom the next morning. And I was just like, I just don't know if I'm ever going to find my husband. Like, blah, blah, blah. (laughs) And um, she was like, I really think you should go to Hermosa. Like a lot of my friends were in town from home. And she was like, you'll have so much fun. So my mom actually convinced me to go out. Thank God I did because Brian ended up being there um, and he... Wait, was the wedding in L.A.? 
The wedding was in LA. I did not know that. And this. then because I was friends with the bride and groom from home and like a bunch of people there, they invited Copy. me to come out to party with them in her Because it was the, the day after day. the wedding and they're right. all here. Okay. Yeah, amazing. everyone's like hung over and trying to hair the dog. So the I get to they used to call it the poop deck in Hermosa. I don't even know if it's still there. I know I, what you're talking about though. I don't even know what it's called actually, but the poop deck. And so we're all <laughs> partying there and Brian comes up and I have this video on my phone actually where he's like, I don't want to talk to your phone, I want to talk to you. And I was like nervous because I felt like I, I knew he was gonna ask me out again. But um but he did. And then I didn't say no. I was like, Yeah, like at some point we'll I was kind of What did he whatever. say? He was like, I would really love to take you out to dinner. And I said um, maybe sometime, like I said, some like roundabout answer. Fast forward, I'm gonna like speed this up. He, I end up driving him and Nate home, you know, to their place like two blocks away. But this matters later. This detail matters later. Then two, I don't give him my number. Like we don't exchange numbers. Two weeks later, you were there. I think we all went out. This is like right before Coachella, and I had pink hair. I had just dyed my hair pink. Okay. And we go out to um, uh, Mackay. Remember we used to go to Mackay, yeah. and we would do hip hop, like the hip hop yeah. nights. Okay. I'm pretty sure you were there. There was like 15 of us. Lexi, I, I know you were there. And basically he showed up. I had invited Nate and Richie and all these guys whose wedding I was at because I knew that they would bring him. And, and you they did. Wanted to see and him. I kind of like low key internally wanted to see him. Um, and so he showed up and he was like stone cold sober. I was like three tequila sodas deep dancing on the dance floor. And he comes over and he goes d- like dead serious in Brian fashion. Um, Hi, I'm Brian. And I go, dude, I literally met you. Like I gave you a ride home. And he laughed. And he was like, you're right. I'd really love to take you to dinner. And I was like, okay. But I was drunk. So this is now the third time. This is now the third fucking time, which I was not. This is, I was so annoying, but I wasn't trying to be annoying. I was just like drunk and whatever. And I guess I like ran away. He like asked for my number and I was like, you can get it from my friend, which is such a fucking <laughs> annoying answer, right? Like, <laughs> my God. <laughs> so, so I, apparently he's like trying to get my number from the bride, Hey, the other bride who had just got married. Her name was also Haley. And she was like, Brian, I'm not giving you her number. Like she did not say that. And he was like, yes, she did. So fast forward, she ends up giving him my number and she's like, Hey, can I give, can I give Brian your number? And I'm like, yeah, sure. Then he doesn't text me for a week, which, the, which I was like, I was, but it worked, dude, because then I'm all of a sudden And you're like, why isn't he texting me? I'm like, why does, why isn't he texting me? It does work. That does work. Yeah. (laughs) Which Brian This is a classic, like, millennial love story. No, I know. Oh, my God. So then um, he doesn't text me. And so I text Haley and I'm like, why the fuck has he not texted me yet? And she's like, wait, what? I don't know. Let me text him right now. I get a text like 45 seconds later. Hello, Miss Ringo. Like so formal from this random number. It's Brian. And he asked me out on a date. Then for the next like two to three months, we're trying to go on dates, but he was working for, he was like in space programs for the Uh Air Force at this point. So he was at the Pentagon like every weekend and I was shooting weddings like every weekend. So we just kept missing each other and we just like didn't make it a priority. I don't know, whatever. It doesn't, neither here nor there. The main part where we like really connected was um, our mutual friend, Sarah Penny had a housewarming party. And were you guys texting though? No. So no, we weren't texting. And what's crazy is, which I've never shared this on anything. So before... I even met Brian, and we've talked about this. I mean, you and I, you know this, but I like manifested the fuck out of him. <laughs> I'm not kidding. No, she I, did some woo woo shit. I was you guys like do doing manifest some her husband. Witchcraft and wizardry, okay? Because I made a whole list of like every single character trait I would want in a husband, down to like the size of their dick. I mean, I'm not kidding. I was like perfect size <laughs> penis for me. And because I was like, God knows, like God knows what I need, you know, whatever. Yeah. My mom's going to hate this. Um. So then. <laughs> So I was, but I was like, can speak Spanish, has tattoos, has dark hair, has light eyes, is tall, uh, is super warm when he walks into a room, like everyone feels his presence. Like I was so, so fucking detailed. You were violently specific. Violently. And I remember you saying that you did that. And I was like, part of me was like, okay, this girl's kind of crazy. And then part of me was like, this girl's also genius. <laughs> and I should be doing this probably. Yes. Well, so my human design is I'm a manifesting generator. I just found this out like a month ago. So I keep saying this like I'm so annoying. But um, but I think that's why I've always been such a proponent of manifestation. It works like in, if you speak things out and you pray over things, it literally puts into existence. So mm-hmm. I did that. Also, I just started therapy uh, in January. I met Brian in March. In my first therapy session, my therapist tells me I'm going to marry somebody in the military. And I had just... Shut up. I'm, I didn't know this. Yes. I And I had just... Sadly, my cousin, like I had a family member commit suicide who was in the military, like really not long after. And so, or right before, I mean. So right I was before really, the therapy? Right before the therapy, like two months before the ser- therapy <gasps> session. Awful. I know. And so at the time I was like, fuck no, I'm not doing that. Like it was traumatic. I'm like, I'm not going to marry someone in the military. Mm-hmm, fuck mm-hmm. people up, whatever. And she was like, okay, well you are. 
And then your therapist, my therapist, yes, but she was like a like woo-woo new therapist? agey, yeah, yeah, for sure. Okay. She was like definitely psychic. She was <laughs> my amazing. God, she know that. Um, she was incredible. Her name's Drew. Um, but she, cool name. yeah, she told me that, and I wrote it down in my journal. I used to journal all the time. And also, before I met Brian, one of my other friends, Bethany, who you know, yeah, who is like also super spiritual, and she basically told me one day that God told her. Uh, that her husband's name was Jason. And I was like, no, he did not. Like, that is not, God does not do that. And she was like, I mean, okay, but it worked for me. Like, so then, you know, me, I'm like, well, I'm going to try it. So I go back home and I'm like meditating and I'm like, you know, just trying to sit there in quiet and and, and pray. And I asked God and I literally feel like I, I heard him say, and I wrote this down in my journal. This is before I met Brian, okay? I, Brian, I heard him say the name Brian, Shut and my up. and I have it in my. I've never told you this. No, I have it in my journal, and I wrote B R I. I spelled his name wrong. I put B R I A N, and I wrote I don't like this name. <laughs> the only Brians I know are Richie Sapp. Okay, Richie Sapp's wedding is the one that I went to where I met Brian. Are Richie Sapp's dad and my cousin's husband, and that's like all I have. That was in probably like January, or February. Not quite sure. Then literally March second or third is when or first is when they got married and that's the wedding that i met brian at but did I don't, you put connect no, the dots no i did not connect the dots until after we broke up which we'll get there it was like just you know heard that and then like put it in the back of my head forgot about it otherwise i would have gone on the date with him like in two seconds but, but you I, wrote it down in your journal yes i have it in my journal uh, we need a photo of it i know okay i want to know for someone that's listening and yeah. they're like, okay, what do you mean you manifested what you wanted? Can yeah. you be a little specific about what they should do if yeah. someone is wanting to manifest their husband? Yes. So, I mean, obviously this can look different for everybody. Everybody can do that. There's not like a set way, I don't think. But mm-hmm. the main two things are that you want to write things down like physically pen and paper. And um, what I do is I write it down pen and paper and then I speak it out. So what I mean by that is like I say – um, I'm very spiritual. I'm not like religious based, but I'll say like, God, thank you that, um, you know, my husband is tall. God, thank you that my husband, it has dark hair and light eyes and lots of tats. I'm not kidding. I would like go around my house and I would like speak these things out. So this could be with your job. This could be with like anything. It doesn't have to be relationships. Mm-hmm. It can be genuinely anything. Um, you basically the other thing that's key is making a vision board so like i actually take if you you go on pinterest magazines whatever and you get pictures that represent like what goals and what you want to achieve and look what you want your life to look like and you actually physically have a visual in front of you to look Mm -hmm. at every day as well as a list and then speaking it out like to me that is like the trifecta Mm -hmm. that causes that shifts things in the atmosphere and like literally puts it into Mm -hmm. place which i agree and it does work for all things i use a lot of those things a lot Mm -hmm. with work Mm -hmm. but i want to be specific about manifesting your husband like what other things were you writing down regarding what you wanted in a man um, okay. Like what did I put on my list? Yeah. Other things besides the size of his dick? Yeah. Okay, perfect. I also put, I mean, like character matters so much to me. So I was like, is very humble, is very generous with his time, his money, everything, like not stingy. That is such a turn off to me. Um, that he that my parents love him, that he gets along with my family, that I love his family. Mm-hmm. Um, that he gosh, I'm trying to think what else. I mean, I can literally send you the list, mm-hmm. but my biggest things with my who I wanted to marry had to do with like their heart and their character Mm -hmm. that they make me feel that when I'm with them like I feel the best version of myself that they bring out the best qualities in me that I don't feel like I have Mm -hmm. to dim my light being around them and that was huge for me because my whole life I've always had a big personality and I was told by not only people I was dating but but like people friends that I was too much Mm -hmm. literally like you are too much yeah I'm sure you've gotten this too because we're similar in this way Mm -hmm. and we have big personalities and I it always made me feel like shit, you mm-hmm. know, and it made me feel like I wasn't good enough or who I was wasn't okay. Even and... like adults in my life, just like I'm mm-hmm. thinking of like coaches, teachers, just like of my my friends' parents. It was always like you're too much, you're too much. Yeah. Tone it down a little. Yeah, like you know, men like this, so oh my do blah God. blah blah. That's the biggest bullshit. Isn't I'm that like crazy. It is crazy because and I dated men who did not like who I was, yeah. and and it, you can tell, like you know. If you are in a relationship and you don't feel like the best version of yourself, then you need to get out of that relationship. Absolutely. It's, that's It's easy as that. Which is why I admire you and Brian so much because he is obsessed with your crazy, over-the-top, yes. fun, 
yeah. too much self. Yeah, I know. He's obsessed with you being too much. Yeah, I know. And I lo- I'm like, thank God, because it just makes me more me. I feel he makes me feel so good about and confident about myself. And he's my biggest cheerleader. And your partner, your life partner needs to be your biggest cheerleader. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't know. And marriage is hard. You know, you're going to refine refine each other. You have it's going to pull out things and show bad sides of you and dark sides of you. And so you need to be with somebody that can like love and see those things, but also remind you of your value and how incredible of a person you are. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, so that was like what I was manifesting. I, I and it worked. And um, Brian is genuinely and like we'll get to this because obviously, you know, you were there for the whole breakup and it was brutal. But he is the most incredible, kindest, generous just like the best hearted person I know. Um, most fun. Most fun. So encouraging. That's the other thing. We have so much fun so together. So easy to talk to. Yes. So easy to talk to. And we, like I literally, I don't want to, I don't want to offend him, but like he feels like one of the girls sometimes. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? I feel like I could talk to him about anything. He can. And I don't have to like bro it up when yeah. I'm with him. Like no, he's no, no. very in tune for being like such a guy's guy. He's yeah. so in tune with his emotions. Very. He's very sensitive. Yes. Very, which is hot. Yeah, it is. I remember our second date. I was at his house in Hermosa and um, I like had gone outside. We were, you know, it was like party time in the summer. Like no one went to work. I don't know when we worked. And I went inside. I'd like gotten a drink downstairs, came back up and he was talking with one of his friends and they were both kind of like crying, not like intensely, but they're just having a deep convo. And I remember I've, I thought, oh my God, I've never really seen men cry like this. Like this is so crazy. And then I started crying because it made me like feel a certain <laughs> so type of you. way. I know. And then he came over and I like talk about this. I for to so many people because it, well, I've talked about this to my therapist a bunch because it really impacted me a lot. He came over and hugged me and like held my head and he was like, it's so good to cry. And I was like, what the fuck is going on? Like I've never had a man do that for me. Like give me a safe space to feel and have emotion. And I was like, this is, you are perfect for me. Like we need to get married. Um, (laughs) So we did. (laughs) Okay. So let's travel back a little because you, back to the story. So then you, Sarah Penny has a yes. house party yes. that Brian's at. Yes. And so I had texted him the week prior being like, I mean, I had been thinking about him, but I said, are you going to be at this party? And he said, I don't know. Are you? And I said, yes. And he goes, well, it looks like I'm going. So then I'm nervous all week. I'm like, oh my God, but I don't tell any of my friends. Like I don't tell any of y'all about him really. Cause I'm still like unsure about him kind of. Okay. Can I just ask a quick question yeah. for someone that's like, I feel like we've all been there where we're mm-hmm. like, okay, I kind of like. Have been thinking about this guy, right? Yeah. <laughs> Looking back, are you like, oh my God, I knew in my gut like he was my person at I all? I did, yes, that night, but not like when I'm texting him this Got prior. It. I will say I felt so comfortable around him. Like I was not questioning anything. Like I was not over analyzing text messages. I was literally just like being my total self, which it wasn't like he did anything in that moment to make me feel that way. I just, energetically was like, oh, I'm good. I don't need to. And that's not me. I can overanalyze everything. (laughs) He doesn't text me for four hours and he says, hey, and I'm like, what's that mean? (laughs) Like I would do, I was the queen of that. And then with him, I wasn't at all. Like I just didn't, I don't know. So we get to Sarah's house and um, I'm so nervous. My friends who I'm with are like, what the fuck is wrong with you? Like, why are you? And I'm like, they're like, is there a guy here? And I was like, I mean, kind of whatever. Because Haley's the most confident, doesn't give a Fuck type yeah. of girl. She'll like walk in and like do a dance move and like do the splits and yeah. like take a shot. Well, like you like yeah. You just the moral of the story is you don't care. No, I and ne- you never yeah. act like weird. Yeah, I I don't. You're normally. so social, and I'm like literally so anxious. Like I'm going in, and I'm like fuck. Uh, who answers the door? Brian. Brian answers the door. He's the first one there, and I literally just go hi and walk past him. Like <laughs> go outside. I'm like hiding. And I immediately downed like three shots of tequila. I used to party a lot harder. I don't really drink anymore. Um, but I was like hyping myself up in my head. I was like, you're a bad bitch. Get inside. Go talk to that man. And so I did. And so you then, definitely had a crush on him then. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But I wasn't, again, it was like an internal, like it wasn't a conscious thought. I think it was kind of like a subconscious yeah. crush. I don't know how to explain that. But go inside and I ended up, um, his best friend was there. And oh, apparently I was talking in a British accent for like the first half because Adam thought I was British until the next day. When I met him again, that Sarah makes sense. husband. So I was fully being myself is what I'm trying to also yeah. say. And Brian and I connected. Um, I was like obsessed with him. I was like trying to take a shirt off. There's a video of this at one point in the kitchen. <laughs> and and I knew, I think in that moment, I was like so drawn to him. I was like, what the fuck's going on? And I was like, I'm going home with this guy. And my friends were like, no, you're not. And I was like, yes, I am. Bye bye. And like left <laughs> the party with him. And we go back to his place. We had a great time. And then the next morning... 
he's like, I'm like frantic because he's like, you want to go down to the beach? We're going to have like a beach day. And I was like, yeah, but I'm wearing the same clothes from the night before. And it's like a short mini yellow dress with like booties and not beachy. So I like run to free people. I'm like trying to find a fucking outfit last minute. Can't find anything. Go back. I'm like, fuck it. I'm going to wear the same thing. Get down to the beach thinking it's just going to be me, Brian, and Nick Ruby, and like a few other people. It's the entire party from the night before. So I'm... And Brian and I actually didn't even hook up that night, like, fully. So, like, I'm, like, doing this full walk of shame without even having done anything. And I'm, like, what's up, guys? Like, (laughs) hey. (laughs) Hey, it's me again. Yeah, hey, guys. Everyone's, like, ooh, like, how's y'all's night? Yeah. And I was, like, shut the fuck up. (laughs) So then we basically, from then on, like, I'm not kidding. I went back home for, like, one night, like, Saturday night. And then Sunday, I this is how crazy I was and, like, how much I didn't give a fuck. Like, I was not overanalyzing anything. I literally... Sunday morning, woke up, packed a bag, like an overnight bag. He had not invited me over or anything. Drove to his place in Hermosa, texted him on the way. I was like, hey, I'm coming over. And he was like, okay. This is insane. It's insane. He's like, okay. (laughs) And then I get there and I like his best friend, Brad, who you know now, who's like hilarious. Brad, Brad, we fucking love you. Um, I go upstairs and I'm like, hey, guys. And I guess uh, his our, our mutual friend, Nate, was like, dude, you need to take her on like a real date. So, Brian, I'm in cutoff shorts, a crop top, and Air Force Ones. And Brian's like, I'd never been in the chart house. And he was like, um, let's go to the chart house. And I'm like, okay, like, is this okay what I'm wearing? And he was like, yeah, it's a really fancy restaurant. Okay. <laughs> and Brian goes in, like, showers, comes back out in, like, a really nice outfit. He, like, loves fashion, loves dressing up. And I, <laughs> I'm like, why do you look so nice? And he was like, oh, no, I just like to dress like this, whatever. We get to the chart house. It is, like, full blown. such a guy thing to such say. Such a fucking guy thing. It is white tablecloth, like, you know, china cutlery and shit and i'm like what the fuck i'm like i look crazy ended up being fine but at that dinner i sat across from him and i swear on my life that was when i knew that that he was i was gonna marry him because i felt like i knew him in another life and i've felt that with two other people margaret and then my friend kendall i've told you about um where i in a past life i was i knew them somehow yeah and i just can't explain it other than i just felt so connected to him and so at ease and um then basically i like moved in with him i'm not (laughs) and we had like a full blown love affair for two months and then we broke up. Because you and, broke up with him. Yes, I broke up with him. So Why I, did you break up with him? So this is like the whole other story. But I grew up, you know, pretty Christian. Um, but my parents were like pretty chill about it growing up. And then as l- later in life, like in college and post college, went to some churches that I would arguably say were cults <laughs> and um, got like really brainwashed. And it was, you know, very unhealthy. But I had this mindset of like, oh, Bri- so Brian's Jewish, as you know. So my whole life, I had been told in these churches I was going to that like if he wasn't a Christian and he didn't love Jesus, then I couldn't be with them, which is like so fucked up. And I honestly internally didn't feel that way like I didn't really believe the majority of the things that I was saying I believed I was just saying that I believed them to like fit in and obviously clearly God knew like exactly what I needed because I married the man of my dreams and but I had to get over like a lot of this religious trauma that I experienced and um sadly Brian's dad had passed from pancreatic cancer the year prior and so he was also dealing with like a lot of grief that he wasn't really dealing with Mm -hmm. and so basically we both needed that time, but I'm the one that initiated the breakup because I felt like I couldn't be with him. And my dad actually, who like never previously gave me relationship advice ever, called me and was like, you really need to look at his character and he's because he's an incredible person and I think you're making a mistake. And not his religious views. And not his religious views. And coming from my dad, that obviously meant a lot, but I still went through with it. Then the next day we got back together. I remember, I remember you coming over and being like... Oh my God. Oh my yeah, God, I forgot I, you were there. You were like... Yeah, I just broke up with him. And we were like, what? <laughs> yeah. Why? Yeah. I'm we were like, he's so awesome. Like, why would you break up with him? You're like, because he's Jewish. <laughs> I know, guys. And it's so, it like hurts. It honestly, like, I know it's, we've gotten past it now, but like it really hurt him for so long. Mm-hmm. And it hurt me too, because that's just not actually who I am. But mm-hmm. I was so dealing with like a lot of just brainwash. I don't know how to explain it other than that. Like it's just gets so in your head that like, especially when you're in these churches that are really intense and do Mm -hmm. operate like a cult, like it's hard to like get out of these mindsets. Well, also there are people that are super religious and they want to date and marry someone that has the same religion as them. That that's totally up to them. Like there are still, there's Jewish people that want to marry other Jewish people there. I have a ton of Jewish friends that would prefer to marry someone Jewish. I have, there's other, there's Muslim people that want to marry just Muslim people. I, I totally understand that. Yeah. But I remember thinking, Oh my gosh, this guy is such a catch. Like you have such amazing chemistry and connection. 
And I didn't realize it was that big of a deal for you, like the whole religion aspect. Yeah. Like I was like, really? That's the reason? Why well, not? Because that's not me. Yeah. Like, and that's not who I was to my core or even really who I presented as. But mm-hmm. in in my head, I was dealing with a lot of like confusion. Mm-hmm. And so basically, yeah, we we broke up. We got back together the next day, remember? And then a week later, I, I did it again. And Brian, being the incredible person that he is, was like, I, I'm really sad. Like, I really like you a lot I mean we were like in love at this point (laughs) but he was like but I understand and you got to do what is best for you at the end of the day like so mature so kind then the part that is you know the drama that you and I experienced that you were there for was the next seven months of me trying to get him back and him saying no like I physically showed up to his house three different times because she was literally insane (laughs) no I mean I am insane (laughs) obviously (laughs) but um (laughs) but it worked (laughs) so yeah no. no but I tried to get him back for like seven months my biggest advice with that was like I should have just like let him do his thing and like let it go because I and like he would have probably come back in my life a lot sooner. I do think everything happens for a reason and the timing was like perfect because he was dealing with a lot of grief from his dad. Absolutely. I was dealing with like a lot of trauma from religion stuff, which I was dealing with in therapy. But at the same time, I was like so certain that he was my person and my husband. And so so certain to the point where yeah. all of our friends were like you're delulu Mm -hmm. like you know when a guy is just like clearly showing every sign that he's not interested and like Haley would be like well i'm gonna go to his house tonight and we were like no (laughs) like he is giving you every sign like she was just doing insane shit which like now looking back is funny because they're literally married but like at the time she was like do you think i should do this like i've texted him seven times like shouldn't i text him again we were like no i know like, don't text him again i know i know i know like, and like, don't facetime again like don't go to his house right now like he clearly doesn't want yeah that yeah he was not giving me anything he was giving um, nothing he was giving zero percent and she was like i'm gonna give it all yeah and i was like i'm <laughs> like she, you were insane yeah, I know. Um, no, no, no. What's that song? It's like the no, 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 no way. Like I'm living without <laughs> you. And that was me. And because in that play, he literally like the guy actually fucks her over and she's like, but I love you. That was me. You were so sure so and confident sure. So sure. that this man was your husband. And I was like, you're insane. Also, this is going to sound so crazy. But I mean, I was having like a lot of affirmations throughout. So there was. Um, I was driving on the highway at one point and this is when I was like really having to, I mean, I was fucking depressed as fuck. Like I was so sad. She was so, every so conversation sad. was about Brian. Oh my gosh. I was so annoying. You know, those friends, like, I mean, we've all had them. I was this person where they don't ever shut the fuck up about their boyfriend or their ex. And you're like, all right, it's seven months in, like, let it the fuck go. And I couldn't do it. I mean, I was just so, so heartbroken. And I, so I was like in my car one day and I was praying and I was like, do I need do I need to move on because like all these I don't know what to do and I I have not had this experience with his dad or really with any like a with any sort of like presence other than God where I felt like they were clearly talking to me and I was driving on like in Studio City and I I was getting the left hand lane and so clearly I know this sounds bizarre but I heard his dad say like everything's gonna work out and I'm I start sobbing because I'd never had an experience like that where I like heard a voice. I, I mean I probably everyone's gonna think I'm fucking crazy on this thing, but I mean you're married to him. But so. like it, I heard it so. I am also very spiritual and I am very in tune with things. Um, but I heard this voice and I knew it wasn't like this God voice. It was like his dad talking to me. And so after that I was like okay, like whatever. But then that's what helped me. Um, I got back on dating apps. I got back on Raya and I started dating dating loosely term. I it was like COVID was about to happen or like maybe COVID had just hit? Co- COVID hadn't happened yet. COVID hadn't happened yet. Okay, yeah. So I'm talking to this guy who I won't name, but Brian, because of like the industry he was in, Brian and all their friends knew exactly who he was, which worked for he my benefit. He was co- cool from the guy's POV. Super. I mean, he is. He is a very good looking guy, like yeah. successful. Um, and I made sure that my friend Sarah let him know, let Brian know yeah. that I was like talking to this guy. Um Anyways, Brian shows up at my house the next day. Like, literally, he finds out that night, and then he shows up at my doorstep the that next Haley day. That Haley was talking to this really cool guy. Yeah. And Brian found out, and literally yeah. the next day, she, he, he showed shows up. up. After seven months of fucking drama. And so I'm like... Of, of g- literally ghosting. Ghosting. Like, no response. Yeah, I literally he thought he was a sociopath and he shows up at Yeah, your house. I was like, is this guy a sociopath? Like, I don't know what's happening. He shows up at my house, so half of me is really pissed off. The other half is like, I love you, yeah. you know? And we ended up... That's how we got back together. We basically had a week of just like... He wasn't staying over, but he'd come and we would like talk through. And I was so honest because by that point I was kind of done. I was like, 
you've treated me like shit for seven months and I know I hurt you really bad, but also you've hurt me now. And mm-hmm. like, I want to know. And he basically said to me, I know who you are. I know you're, I know what kind of person you are. And I'm not just trying to date you to date you. Like, I want to do this for long term. Mm-hmm. And so, so we did. We got back together. How old were you guys at this point? Yeah. So I was 27. He was 29. We got back together. COVID hit. So we're like together 24 seven. And you then basically he, moved in. We, we did move in together. Yeah. Um, and then, and at this point, I'm like on cloud fucking nine, right? I'm like, well, at this point, I've been on cloud nine since, but. And know. keep in mind, like, me being one of Haley's close friends and oh, the rest yes. of our friend group being like so immersed in this Brian drama, we like couldn't even stand hearing his name. Oh, at they this hated point. him. They hated him. At the bit, I was like, we were like, how the literal fork? Yeah. Could you let this guy that's been ghosting you yeah. for seven months? Yeah, yeah. And treating you like absolute garbage yeah. and stringing you along yeah. sometimes. Yes, yes, he did. Like, how could you ever let, like, take him back? Yeah. Like, we were like, you were so dumb. Yeah. We were just over it. Yeah. Because, like, you like you said, like, it was just, it, your guys' relationship really taught me patience within, like, a friendship. And, yeah. like, letting girls, letting my girlfriends do whatever the fork they want, ultimately. Yeah. yeah. Because, like, you can give as much advice like as you want at the end of the day it's like you're not i'm not dating him like you are yeah and people are gonna do whatever they want to do and like the thing is is yeah absolutely and the thing is is like i mean me just speaking on behalf of myself i don't know about our friends but like for me i wasn't like mad i was just like how the literal fork could you yeah and i was like i didn't want you to be stupid yeah no i know and i got i would have been the same way like this is it's it's crazy talking about it like because it all this happened, but also like, like we didn't know this was going to be her husband. We were like, how could you take this guy back? Which like he had his own reasons, whatever. But yeah. like just being a protective friend, we yeah. were like and yeah. we had heard about it. We had and heard I, the back. And that was the thing, too. Like I because he wasn't talking to me, I didn't know what he was going through. So he was dealing with like a lot of grief. And from neither his did dad. we. Like, yeah. No, and so, no, one did. no one did. And so we were just interpreting how he was acting like with what we like could. a douche. We yeah. were like, oh, he's such a fuck boy. Right, right, right. When but in like, reality, he was dealing with like really intense really, grief yeah. and stuff. Yeah. And so it was. Yeah, it was just crazy. But so basically we got back together. We like moved in together and then he deployed to Bahrain in May. And so we only were together for like a month and a half, two months before he deployed then and by the, but right before he deployed, he moved all of his stuff into my place. And uh, then when he got back, he moved in with me on Beachwood, like in Hollywood. The rest is history. We got married, and it's been, yeah, he's incredible. I mean, every relationship has its struggles, you know what I mean? And like marriage is hard, but I really highly recommend marriage. Like it's the best. It's just so fun. I get to hang. Like we we're both work from home, so we hang out like twenty four seven every day, and I genuinely don't get tired of him. And so I just. You know, my biggest advice is like wait for the right person because you will find that and then just be intentional about like manifesting it um, because it works and don't settle for anything but what exactly you want in life. Like if you want a a husband with four siblings who is from a Texas family who owns a ranch and, you know, has a lisp. <laughs> Like something fucking random, you can have that. I mean, like, let's make it really specific and random. Okay. My point is, you can have that. So, a lisp. I don't know why I said that, but well, you know, that's what I'm saying is like, just be whatever you want, you can have and do not settle. Mm-hmm. I see a lot of people settling and it, it makes me sad. Mm-hmm. So, is there anything you wish you would have known earlier, like in your 20s when it comes to dating? I mean, a lot of my dating, what like culture and my experience around dating was surround. Uh, was guided by religion and so I just wish that I wouldn't have been in that culture Mm. I don't really that's the only thing because I Brian and I were talking about this and I might have mentioned it to you I wish that I dated around more growing Mm -hmm. up and I wish I had more fun I was just too serious about dating and about everything like a lot of the the churches I was involved in everything has so much weight and they make everything so dramatic and it's like everything's so intention intentional Um, and until you're in that it's like hard to explain but like it it just made me I was so serious about every date that I went on and I was so you know I was like is this guy gonna be my husband is this guy whatever maybe just go on dates and like fuck around and find out I don't know yeah you know and I kind of wish I did a little bit more of fucking around and finding out I could do more of that yeah it's like it's just it's not that deep I Mm -hmm. think you know have fun be intentional with like who you want to marry but like you know also I could have spent a lot of my 20s just like partying a little bit more and I was working a ton which is good but I I really didn't have a ton of fun like I 
I wish that I took more time for myself and with, you know, went on more trips with my girlfriends and dated around more. So Mm -hmm. I think it's really important to date around too, because you find out what you like and what you, and what you don't like Mm -hmm. and what you'll put up with and what you won't put up with. You've been staying with me for a week. And so you've been hearing my dating chronicles. Yes. What advice would you give me when it comes to dating? What I told you the other night, which is you got to just like put yourself, get out of your house or like, because you're not going to meet men that you want to marry probably at an influencer event, most likely. No. Um, and so, which is, you know, it's hard. LA dating though is like, it's like its own beast. Um, it's like not even fair to even compare it to yeah. other regular dating. Yeah. <laughs> like, I, I would. As I'm saying this now, I'm like, I honestly, my advice to you genuinely right now would to be more intentional with manifesting your who you want. It's hard to, I met Brian at a wedding. Keep in mind, like weddings are good places to meet people. But like, unless you're a wedding photographer or going to them all the time, you're probably not going to like go to weddings a ton. And so, you know, it's, I would just say for you to be more intentional with manifesting it, praying over it. Um, putting on a vision board, whatever. I mean, I, I literally on one of my vision boards had a picture of a, a man with dark hair and light eyes that I wanted to like him, my husband to look like. <laughs> so I'm like, I'm I'm just saying get really, really specific. Mm-hmm. Get back to your list of what you want. And yeah, then and really then, and then the put list. yourself in situations like, I mean, it's hard because I, I was saying too, like finding friend groups because you really want to meet somebody through mutual friends. Because I, I, you know, then they're already vetted and you don't have to worry about like them being a weirdo. <laughs> I mean, relatively speaking. But getting, it's, I don't know, dude. I don't know. It's hard. It's hard. Mm-hmm. It is hard. Because even we went out to Manhattan Beach the other night. I was like, let's just go like out to dinner and we can maybe see some guys. That went so well. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, see, do you get it now? <laughs> I don't know. I, I, I think too, like for LA women, um, I would say... Manhattan Beach, uh, Hermosa Beach, and then like San Diego will have more like chill men. I don't know about the LA dudes here. Like the LA dudes are scary. Yeah. Yeah. So. You guys are married now, and you had the iconic wedding in Italy that everyone and their mother loves to talk about, <laughs> which it rightfully so was like the coolest wedding I've Good. ever been. To. I mean, the South Africa wedding was. Oh my god, that was amazing! Uh, cool in oh, a different well. way. Like they were both amazing. Yes. Um, I want to talk a little bit about your Italian wedding because I feel like a lot of people are now wanting to do a wedding outside of the country. Yeah. And what advice would you give to someone that wants to have a destination wedding? Yeah. Okay. Definitely hire a planner that is local to the location that you want to get married in. Uh, So for me, having Marty, who is my wedding planner, be able to speak Italian fluently because I do not uh, was crucial. Mm -hmm. I mean, I I a lot of Italians don't speak English like they know you're an American coming in. So they're going to up their prices no matter where you're getting married. And so it's nice to have a local to kind of like be a liaison and barter. Totally. Um, That was huge. I would say things that I would that I did well, like I. The place where I got my dress, the veils ranged from two to like 5K, and I did not want to spend that on a veil that I knew I would wear for an hour. Mm -hmm. So on Etsy, they had, I found this like beautiful veil, literally looks the same, and it was $175. So, like, amazing. Another point of advice would be there are, you can do things in a lot more cost effective and affordable way. You don't have to splurge. Like, another place I like went way too overboard were my invitations. Like, I love them, they're stunning, but I could have done them at a more affordable cost. Um, What do you regret spending money on and what was the best money you spent on for your wedding? What I regret spending a ton of money on were my invitations, but also the person that made them was not kind. So like vendors. I remember that. Dude, she was a freaking nightmare. I mean, genuinely, like, I'm sorry, but I mean, I I love to put this out there because I'm not going to say who she was, but you can figure it out by going to my Instagram. But it's just like, she was not... She was awful to work with. Anyways, um, also what else? I feel like that's really like the only thing. Transportation. This isn't. This was a necessity. We had to have transportation to get people to the villa, but it was so expensive, and that was like such an. I didn't know how much it was gonna be. And how much it, was transportation? It was literally twenty thousand dollars. <gasps> I know, and I got the Wait, bill for one day. So for the rehearsal dinner night to take like the wedding party from the villa to the place. Okay. Then the wedding day to get the guests to and from the villa. And then the day after, two days after when we went to the wine so court. So three days. 20K. Three days. But not, but not three days. It was like one day for six hours and another two days for an hour and a half. Like 
It was wild. And the main thing, and I actually like had... Okay, it's insane. It was insane. I had an issue with this because I had been trying to get my planner. I was like, how much is this going to be? And she's like, don't worry about it. Like, we'll figure it out later. And then this was like two months before and we get this bill because a lot of the transportation places won't let you book until like last minute. Mm -hmm. And then they just charge you out the ass. And Mm. so I was like sobbing. I was like, we don't have this. Like, I don't know how I'm going to pay for this, but I have to because Mm -hmm. I have to get my guests to the villa because the, the roads in Italy are to the villa were so tiny and like then there's not like uber or no. like taxis oh where the villa is at all and they were on strike during the, the taxis wedding were on strike yeah so that was like the most chaotic thing ever um that was really hard and those were huge costs um but what i don't regret spending money on i mean my to be honest like my wedding was the best two weeks of my entire life i am so sad it's over and i wish i could relive it genuinely every day i felt like i was on shrooms the whole wedding day it was like the best two weeks of my entire life (laughs) i literally was i'm not married (laughs) i I was like dead cold sober the entire wedding day but i felt like i was floating in a cloud because i was just like wow and like a bunch of stuff went wrong it started pouring raining before the ceremony but like i didn't care i was like this is beautiful like it was so but the the villa like was a huge cost, but I do not regret spending money on that. It was like it was built in the 1100s. It was like stunning. The food was unbelievable. Their Rollins, their catering company out of Florence, and so my wedding was in Florence. I don't know if we said that. Um, it was incredible. What's the catering company called? Rollins. Rollins. Yeah. I wonder. Can we put links to some yeah, of the stuff yeah, yeah. in the episode Absolutely. description? Okay. So if you know I'll anyone, link all my stuff. If you know of anyone that ha- is having a destination wedding, or mm-hmm. if you're having a destination wedding specifically in Florence, we will link all the stuff below. Yeah. yeah. So we can do all the work for and you. And my veil. Like I'll find the yeah. Etsy thing because the veil was so cheap. And it am was... I an idiot for not knowing like a veil costs two to five thousand dollars? Like no, that I seems didn't know. Insane. No, to it's me. insane. I didn't like, know either. Even sorry, even one hundred seventy-five dollars seems expensive. I'm like, why isn't this like thirty bucks? Oh my god, I know. <laughs> I don't know. I but mean, like, for real isn't it just like well everything in the wedding industry is like upcharged by so much isn't it just tool (laughs) yeah no it is and my grandma i was like can you make it for me grandma um which she could have but i was like don't worry about it yeah so i would say the food the food um and what do you mean the villa like for someone that's like what the heck is she talking about yeah what is the villa so we rented out the villa and it was called um villa gambria oh my god i'm like what was the name of my venue yeah villa gambria via gambria and so the which it was it was insane. It is. It is insane. 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 It's stunning. Yeah. And we got and it's it for, huge. it's literally massive. It housed 48 people. Uh-huh. So our whole wedding party and their plus ones were able to stay there. And so that was like huge to me because I wanted everyone to be in the same place as much as possible. For how many days? For three days. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that like, to me, that was like a big chunk of the cost. And um, that's where the wedding venue was yes, as well. So that's where. The, so it's like hotel and wedding venue yeah. together. And honestly, I'll just be straight up with like how much it was because the in, I know the industry like in Texas and especially in California, venues can be 40. It was 40K for three days, but that housed everybody. That also included like the cost of the wedding day and like having the venue there. There are places in Texas and in California and in the States that, that aren't pretty, <laughs> that aren't pretty, that are that much for one day. Which is so insane. I was like, okay we can figure this out whatever and that you know and it was you didn't have to do much to it because it was already stunning so yeah. like the, you didn't have to do crazy floral arrangements yeah. to add yeah yeah i'm when i tell y'all it was the most stunning wedding venue i've ever been to in my entire life yeah and on top of it it was so dang big yeah that i'm not kidding you like every hour of the wedding day was like in an it felt like you were in a new venue because there were so many different parts yes. of the villa that we occupied for yeah. different reasons like the dance party was in a whole different yeah. like section yeah. it was like in a whole different i don't even know well, how to describe was, it there was yeah i wanted everyone to experience like every single part of the villa which so, i'm so glad you did do yeah. that because i feel like most people wouldn't yeah and it was because it's so gorgeous i was you like look, we have to party in like each spot you and utilized so, all yeah. of it and so yeah we um it was, and I wanted the day to flow too. Like I shoot a lot of Jewish weddings and those are so fun because they do like typical Southern weddings, Christian Southern weddings, you know, you get married and then you have cocktail hour and then you have like two hours of eating where there's no dancing and then you dance. Uh-huh. Jewish weddings are typically like you have, which we, we combined, like Brian and I did like half Jewish, half like Christian traditional, uh-huh. whatever. But it was more spiritual. We just like wanted to be like, we both stomped on glass at the end. Yeah. And his mom said it was fine. And we we're like, mazel tov. It was great. <laughs> um, I was like, can I stomp on it too? Like for <laughs> feminist reasons, obviously. No. <laughs> So we had, um, but like, you know, they have the ceremony, Jewish weddings do, cocktail hour, and then they have, they do dancing, and then they do some speeches, and then they do more cocktail hour, and then they do dancing, and then they do dinner, and then they, 
do, get back on the dance floor and they do speeches and they get back on the dance floor and it's kind of like on paper looks chaotic but in person it's so much fun yeah and so that's what i kind of like wanted the whole day because you could flow and feel like lose a lot of energy yeah you do and like momentum by the like with the dinner and the speeches and the going and on eating and on food yeah and, and drinking eating. Yeah. and just sitting there like it's not yeah I wanted it to be like a party I wanted people to and people did they party till eight a.m. So. It was literally the best yeah it was literally the best planned cadence of a wedding I've been to. Thank you. I spent so much time on that so thank you that means a lot. It um, did what so what tips would you give someone for that? For planning, like, how to do that? Yeah, the cadence of the day. Yeah. I would say kind of like what I just said. Like, you want it to feel like it's going to flow. Make sure that when people arrive, there's if you can afford it, there's, like, some sort of water or a juice or cocktail or something um, to, like, have in their hands or to be, like, you know, enjoying. Mm-hmm. Um, then they can sit at the ceremony and have a cocktail while they're watching the ceremony, which is, like, lovely. Um, and then, you know... For, like, even for the getting ready, like, we, I was with Brian, like, pretty much all day. I mean, there was even points where I was literally, like, almost done with my makeup. And he was like, hey, babe, how you doing? And they were like, get out. But, like, I didn't really care. Um, My biggest advice for any couple getting married is to spend as much time together as you possibly can. Because the day is going to go by so incredibly fast. And and you're going to look back and be like, like, if you didn't see them until 6 p.m., it's like, I spent all this money and I didn't get to spend it with my husband on the main part of the day or my partner. And so... I, that's my biggest advice is like make it and also make it so unique and true to you who you are as a couple mm-hmm. like do not ca- let go of any tradition um, that you don't care about you know what I mean like if you like tradition great but if you don't give a shit about the bouquet toss then get rid of the bouquet I didn't do a bouquet toss yeah. I don't give a shit about bouquet toss Ugh, I hate bouquet I hate tosses. bouquet tosses I also hate garter tosses Ugh, like yeah. except for a wedding I shot where Tank gave Xena a full blown lap dance and that was amazing you yeah, know what I mean that's, that's like a different vibe that's iconic it was iconic yeah. um but, you know, all the traditional things that you don't care about, just make it true to who you are because it makes it more fun for the guests because they know who you are. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like it's just more unique. Um, yeah. And just relax. Like, just have so much fun. Like, there's things that are going to go wrong because it's that's it's a wedding. Like, mm-hmm. there, it's not going to be perfect. But it will be perfect if you just let go of any expectation and just try to be present with the people that love you and 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 or you're only going to have this day where all these people that you love together are in the same place. Mm-hmm. So just, like... Be present, focus on the person that you love, and that's it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Was there anything else that you were so glad you spent money on for your wedding? Mm, my dresses. I loved your outfit change. I yeah, I really loved my second dress. It was like a lot easier to like move in. My my main dress um, fit me really well before I left for the wedding, and then I got to Italy and somehow lost weight, which I'm like the fuck. Like I had I've been eating pasta. Like I, I was intentionally trying not to lose weight before the wedding because I wanted the dress to be tight. Uh-huh. So it fit me a little loose on the day of, which like kind of bothered me. But it was a Monique Lillier and it was stunning. Oh my um, god, I would never know that it didn't fit you well. Oh, perfect. Thank you. Okay, great. Because I look back at photos and I'm like, I didn't even know that. Okay, perfect. Perfect. Well, my second dress was a Milanova, and that brand is like so underrated. I love that. That brand. was like my favorite dress I've ever seen. I I was like I wanted to wear that for the for the full wedding, but I but I wanted something more grand. Yeah, like, that's very me too. But the second dress was more my personality. Like totally, it had the choker and like my. My tits were popping, and yeah. I was like, let's get it. You know what I mean? Um, it just was more, like, sexy. Yeah, and, it was like, very sexy. It was ni- more nighttime. Yeah. Yeah. So, and I do wish we got more photos in. I don't regret spending money on a videographer and my photographer. Oh, my photographer. God, the videographer? The, dude, so good. We're, we'll link his thing. I mean, thing. it's Peppa Films, but, like, my five-minute film they created for me, I they could have not made something that felt. They encapsulated everything that Brian and I felt that day, and I think the guests as well, yeah. and put it into a five-minute film. I mean, we were sobbing when we first saw it. I was like... They're so talented and so creative. So Peppa Films are out of Poland. Also, Brian's Polish. So we it was Iconic. like an heir to, they, to that. They basically, like, explain to the viewers what your wedding video was like. Because it was not traditional at all. It seemed like season three of White Lotus. Like a, No, like it literally a- seemed like, yeah, it seemed like a trailer to yeah. a really exciting, The like, first song is like, you know that I'm ballin', moving yeah. through sip when I walk to the party, stylin'. And it's like quick cuts, but um, they, fun. They filmed like the whole day. Yeah, 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 like yeah. Before, yeah. and they even filmed some of the rehearsal. Yeah, they had everything. They had like a lot of voiceover stuff. Um, a lot of like, it was very docu style, very quick cut. Loved it. Fun music. It felt like the most elevated version of a vlog. Yes. Like think yes. about the best like vacation vlog you've ever seen, but like on X Games mode, yes. professional. Yes. Yeah, it was incredible. It was amazing. Yeah, it was. They're so talented. What were some of your favorite moments from your wedding day? 
Oh, my favorite moment was when it was raining and we were all standing. Um, so like there was this huge foyer area that opens up to where we had cocktail hour and it started an hour and a half before the ceremony started. I'm talking torrential downpour. Like, you know, it was raining so intensely, but there are these huge wrought iron doors from like, you know, this a, a villa. Like the fort or the, the 1400s. 1200s. I don't know if I yeah. it, really old. And uh, they were huge, like 30 feet tall and opened wide, like fully open. And Margaret, one of my bridesmaids, put on this classical music playlist. And I mean, I'm everyone was like crying because it was just the rain's coming down. You can hear it. She's playing this beautiful classical music. You guys music. were taking photos. We're taking photos. Um, we're hanging out. like, And it was just that was the most peaceful, calming moment from the day. Um, and then I would say my second favorite you know, the ceremony was really special to me. Um, in my mind, like, it was – the birds were, like, going – chirping like crazy because it had just stopped raining. And so they were – like, literally, it stopped raining, and 20 minutes later, the ceremony started. It was, like – And the sun came out. A movie. It was literally, like – I felt like I was in a dream. And so these birds are – and we say I do and the birds went crazy. I mean, it was nuts. And like that one video that the friend got from the window where like we're walking yes, and the I birds are going crazy. I love that video. Oh my God. Like it was just, that yeah. also is what it felt like to me. Like I love that video because that's how it felt to me. Uh-huh. Experiencing it. Um, And then the what are your dance thoughts? party, obviously. Yeah, obviously. <laughs> what are your thoughts on people filming during your ceremony or like during the wedding like, oh, like people I'm so having glad like you asked this. I'm so glad you asked this because I used to be so anti like no phones I love that all of my friends had their phones out videoing because some of my favorite moments and videos are from people's iPhones yeah and so what we did was we just created like a massive shared album with like all 150 guests and everyone and everyone and was adding their best like the amount of content that I have like just from everybody else's phone mm-hmm. and to be able to remember all the memories throughout the day was so special to me and, and to see Brian. the different angles and perspectives yes and like so I highly recommend I did not give a I, I'm so glad that you I you were like no please film I was like please film do whatever you want like I didn't care honestly by the time the wedding came around and we arrived in Italy I did not give a flying fuck about anything I yeah, was like whatever it. like whatever happens I don't care let's just go party but I think that's a big thing like a lot of people yeah. are like you know no phone ceremony yeah. which I understand and I will always respect yeah. but you used to be so anti phone yeah. yeah, in yeah. which because as a photographer, it's annoying. It is annoying sometimes where they're, you know. So true. You have, everyone has their phone. But at the same time, if you really think about it, like in 50 years from now, it's going to be kind of cool. Like everyone's, fo- it's like what was happening in that moment. This iPhone's going to be so outdated. In 50 years from now, who even knows what it's going to be like. Wait, so that's so true. It's kind of like an, it's like very docu style. Like I don't really care. Any, I don't care at all anymore. It's also like, <laughs> this is like so Gen Z of me, but like, why is it so kind of cute of like someone wanting to capture your wedding? Yeah. Like, I'm thinking of like an old like grandpa like being like yeah or whatever like it's cute they want it just make sure you're not blocking the photographer the videographer and then you're good to go yeah it's like, not like they're like scrolling on Instagram or TikTok no, during your ceremony like no. that would be rude right you know what I mean but right. it is kind of endearing someone being like trying to get a good photo of yeah. you guys and again that was like that all that meant so much to me and Brian and it was some of the best videos and clips like I f- I have. I have every memory documented from mm-hmm. the weekend because everyone was taking videos the whole time. Mm-hmm. It's amazing. And the cool part about just like our friend group is everyone has like a really good eye. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, <laughs> it was like everyone's like videos were everyone's so good. Everyone's creative as hell. Yeah, so yeah, like yeah. everyone like had their own little vlog, their yeah. own little reels, their yes. TikToks, whatever. Yeah, it was. Which was really. It was, yeah, it was just like the best time of my entire life. I know, same. Same. We'll do it again. Yeah. When I can recover financially from this one, we'll do another. Well, my then... wedding. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. <laughs> we'll probably be in Italy. Hopefully. Perfect. Hopefully. <laughs> Seriously, if you don't do it in Italy, I'm going to be like, really no, sad. I will. Okay, I will probably definitely somewhere in Europe. Yeah. Oh, my God. You For could sure. Do it. I mean, there's so many places. We'll talk about that later. Yeah. But like, you know, <laughs> we're going to he's out there. Your husband is out there. He's going to be listening to this podcast at some point. What not, type of maybe guy not do you see me episode. with? Honestly, like a very tall, like, like, buff big guy like t- teddy cuddy bear who's like what did i just say teddy cuddy bear i said teddy <laughs> cuddy bear teddy cuddy bear i can't speak cuddly teddy bear um who's like really kind funny and fun to be around like that's Thank what you. i see what do you see i can't see i cannot picture you with somebody like shy and like no. quiet i would literally you would be so bored yeah i would be and somebody who's a go getter because that that's very much your personality you work really fucking hard and, and you could never be married to somebody that did not also work their ass off <laughs> yeah, like, like you, would, you would be, have the ick in two seconds <laughs> um so yeah if that's you're out there you guys um call me 
yeah, call her or call me and I'll set it up. Like, yeah. I need one successful romance. Haley is one of my favorite friends when it comes to setting me up with someone because you are like ride or die. Like, you'll do the most to try and set me up always, with someone, always. which I appreciate because people out here are gatekeeping their hot single friends. And I'm yeah. like, why? What for why? what? Like, for that's what? weird that you're married and you're gatekeeping your yeah. hot single friends. That is weird. Yeah, I'm like, do you want to fuck them? Yeah, maybe, <laughs> maybe they maybe it's do. Weird. They probably like, do. We're in LA. So. I'm like, I'm literally <laughs> single, complaining to you about how I'm single. Like, set me up yeah. if you know someone. I know. You know. I know. I was really hoping something would happen at the wedding, but it's just like there wasn't. It was a failure. Yeah. Right. Well, so we've traveled together a ton. Yes. Are we getting into Africa? Yeah, <laughs> we've tra- traveled together a ton. Some of our bigger trips were Greece, yes, and then Italy, yes. and then probably our biggest trip was South Africa, yes, together. Yes, um, we were there for a wedding. Our other really good friend, yes. Penny, her wedding, and it was two a two week adventure yes. in South Africa. It was an, it was a dream. It was also amazing. And these like weddings happened in the same year, so it was like it was crazy. And, like yeah. people were like, "TK, who are your friends?" <laughs> like literally. <laughs> well, so I went broke the year. Yes. Of 20 23 same. going to my friend's wedding also same um yeah well sarah's like from our friends from zimbabwe mm-hmm. so that's why she had her wedding there but yeah that was that trip was literally the hilarious. trip of a lifetime a le- trip of a lifetime and and just hilarious i have a whole podcast with ashley our other friend who went to it yeah i have a whole other podcast on that if you will link it down below yeah but um i want to talk a little bit about our trip because speaking of dating it was really funny yes <laughs> oh it was was it funny why was it funny for you okay <laughs> so crazy well y'all were trying to set me up with no, someone on the trip i know and i regret it honestly um keep in mind really? like, i don't mm, well i do um <laughs> Because it was a failure. And now, like, knowing this person, I'm like, why? So, basically, there was, like, somebody on the trip. And, again, I'm like, if I meet somebody and they're single and I think they're cute and good-looking and TK, I'm like, and TK is interested, I'm like, all right, we're going to make this happen. No, and you and, honestly, and more Brian. so Brian was Brian's like, also, he found, he was like, this guy. He's also a girl's girl. Like, yeah, he's he such is, a girl's like, girl. And he, is, he, like, knows what I, he was like, no, you guys would be good, be good Matt. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And, and so, basically... <laughs> Like, uh, we're setting them up in Af- South Africa. It's, like, going great. Another guy that was there for the wedding. Right, right, right. Yeah. This is not my wedding. This is a South Africa wedding. And it was going great. And, um, yeah, the trip itself was hilarious because, like, the wedding, everything went great to the wedding. And then after the wedding, we all went on this buddy moon. Um, which was a which safari. Was a safari, and it was stunning. We were staying it at Kampana, Kampama Resort. Kampama, yeah. Kampama, yeah. Kampama. Um, and it's, like, you know, it's it's in uh, Hoodsprit. Hoods- yeah, we yeah, it was. Yeah. And basically you have these safaris every morning at like 4 a.m., 5 a.m. and then you have one in the evening. And so it's like she's meeting this guy and it's like so dreamy. Like it and felt like I was on The Bachelor yeah. because we were like <laughs> like we're going to take a plane here and then we're going to go on safari yeah. and then we're going to eat this like all-inclusive meal and then we're going to go yes. to this insane pool. Like it literally felt like the bachelor yeah. like i was going on bachelor days yes. and remember it was valentine's day so they were handing oh out God, I roses i was like i'm literally on the bachelor it was yeah Falling i forgot it was south Val- africa i forgot it was valentine's day yeah it was there was like so it was just set up to like be a success yeah. you know what i mean like it, this should have been totally great and and it was for a while <laughs> <laughs> and then it wasn't the funny part about it being so romantic is that some of the trip really wasn't romantic oh, due to traveler's diarrhea. Well, you can call it that, but it was literally <laughs> uh, parasites. And well, yours was. I think, I, I mean, yeah, but like people were on, I and mean, when I say there was what, like maybe 55 people total. Yeah, at And least. only like five didn't get sick. And Me when included. I say, yeah, her, which is so annoying. I, I was know. like, oh, no. <laughs> and thank God the bride and groom didn't get sick. Sarah, sorry for talking about this again. But um, <laughs> literally it was like, it was... Th- there was oh my god we were dropping like flies dropping like flies and thank god there was doctors on the trip so people had like steroids z packs things like that i brought a z pack you brought a z pack and yeah. i gave it to one Ashley. of the doctors had a few steroids and so brian got sick before me and he took a steroid he was fine within a day but <laughs> we basically were all on safari and like people started like you know being like not because no one at this point was comfortable to saying like hey i'm gonna shit myself <laughs> and so no like when i tell you guys like I have never been more comfortable with potty talk in my life yeah. since that, like, that trip changed my perspective on potty talk. If someone's like, listen, I'm going to shit myself, I'm like, Slay, like, I'll help you find a bathroom. Slay. Like, I get it. Like and she did help me find a bathroom. We'll yeah. get to that in a second. But yeah, <laughs> so, like, literally everyone's dropping, like, flies. I come into the room one night and Brian had, like, he was like, I'm just tired. You know, I'm going to go back. And I come in. He's, like, shivering, like, in the bathtub. He's so unwell. And I'm like fuck, like, I really hope I get sick. He takes the last steroid that they have on the trip. So the next day, he's fine. Then I wake up absolutely dead. 
Um, no, sorry, we did have some overlap because this story matters. I go back to the room and y'all, everyone's seen Bridesmaids. There was a point. <laughs> Brian's gonna literally kill me for saying all this. I'm talking about his dick. I'm talking about diarrhea. We go into the room. We come back from safari. And I'm like, he's like unwell on the toilet. And I'm like, move, like, I've got to go. Keep in mind, these rooms are like so beautiful. They like, but everything's so glass modern in. and chic. So like everything is like glass and you can hear everything. Like if and I go pee, everything. Yeah, if I go pee, like you can hear it and see it. <laughs> like it's just, like, it's just so... very, like, it's not, why was everything in South Africa like that? Like, just like no, <laughs> no sense of privacy literally at all. Literally so not. like, even if you were to go oh. and like, toot you would be able to hear it yeah. like loudly yeah also everything's glass and hard so like yeah. it was just echoing yeah and the fact that people were like having insane <laughs> no, no no like it was so bad and so i'm like no like you and he's like i can't so like i literally was like going in the shower like i i there was no option you guys like it was so bad so i like Everyone have a was day themselves. yeah i have a day where i'm like actually ill have a fever the next day i'm like i don't have a fever anymore but everyone's sick at this point literally mm -hmm. everyone's sick mm -hmm. and so but i'm like i gotta go on safari like i'm not gonna miss i have too much fomo like, and it was like a known if someone said like oh i have to go to the bathroom it was like oh shit yeah like we there that means they're gonna like shit 911. Themselves. Yeah, yeah they're 911. Shit themselves. Like that doesn't mean like, oh, I've gotta go pee really quick. Yeah. That means like I'm going to shit myself. Yes. So we literally go, her and I are like in the same safari group. Um, group. And we get to this like one area and I'm like, we have to like have a do I have wine? We're supposed to like have yeah. wine and like make it whatever. I am dying. Like this is just day two of my sickness and I'm like sweating. Um, but I decided that day that it would be a smart idea to wear a Aritzia one piece <laughs> bodysuit without snaps at the bottom. So like to take it off, you have to Obviously. get fully fucking naked. <laughs> and I'm like, TK, you gotta go with me. And she's like on it. She grabs toilet paper. Like we're like, she's like filming, you know what I'm I mean? I'm like filming us. We're walking in the middle of the- Jungle. Yeah. The or not literal, jungle, but yeah. We're like in the wild with the all wild. these animals, like literally lions, lions zebras. Elephants. Yeah, elephants, Hyenas. giraffes. Yeah, like- Hippos, okay, every, deadly animals. Everything, yeah. And um, we <sighs> are walking to get away from the group so that Haley can literally shit herself. And get, and get naked. I have to get fully nude. On safari. <laughs> <laughs> I have to get fully fucking nude. So I'm out there. And, and I'm like carrying oh her tissues. Yeah. For her to wipe her butt. Yeah, no. But I was like, TK, like, what if something eats me? I'm like, you know, in, in, um, in a parent, parent trap. trap. I'm like hitting the sticks. <laughs> yeah. And she's like, bitch, I don't think anything is going to eat you out as you're like shitting yourself. Like, I think yeah. they're going to stay away. And I'm like, y'all, I'm but I'm, I have a video of this. She took a video of this. So we'll include Obviously. it here. Just like block out everything. But literally, butt ass naked. Um, you know, made it happen. It all went well. And then we get back to the car and basically I get home and I find out that I have like three different types of parasites, E. coli. Like I was so ill and I don't know. I'm sure other people got tested for stuff when they got back. Just probably didn't talk about it in the group text. But like if I had parasites and E. coli. I'm sure. Yeah. I'm sure everybody else did as well. So I don't know what we were dealing with, but it was it was fucking wild in every yeah, way, shape, and form. Yeah, it was just a known thing. And like the funny part about it is like I was supposed to be having this oh, right. like a romantic time. Yeah, romantic, fun, sexy, you know, thing going on. And yeah. I thought it was that. And yeah. then one night I remember being like, huh, that's weird. Like he wants to Oh my god, to go I forgot to about this. Yeah. I literally forgot about this. <laughs> I just remember one night, like, you know, we were really hitting it off. Like, I was catching a vibe. I felt like he was catching a vibe. And I was like, that's really weird. He just, like, kind of wants to go to bed. He doesn't want to hang out more. Like, yeah. what's going on? Yeah. And the next day, like, nothing happened. I just, like, went to bed or whatever. And I, the next day, I was like, Haley, this is so weird. She, like, like I comes thought, in my room in the morning. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and Haley's, like, unwell. <laughs> and I was like, listen, what's going on with this guy? Like, I don't yeah. think he's into me. Like, that's so weird. We were just, like, having such a good time. Yeah. And then he, like, needed to dip out and, like, wanted nothing to do with me. Like, this is what I'm telling myself as a girl. Right. And lo and behold. Yeah, he was shitty. He had to shit himself. It was because he had to shit <laughs> So, yeah. I mean, and so you can, so you, can imagine. Into you. Can you imagine, like, making out with somebody and then you feel it coming and you're like, I got to go. Yeah. <laughs> No. Like, what are you gonna do? <laughs> and you just met them. Like, keep in mind, I, Brian like, and I were married. No, we weren't married, but like, basically at this point, and like that trip, we got so close because yeah. we had obviously never seen each other shit in front of each other, like <laughs> on that level. Okay. And there was always some level of like, hide it from the other person. Yeah, of course. You can't on this. And so I can't imagine like having just met somebody, you're like really into them making out, and then you feel diarrhea coming on, <laughs> and you're like, all of a sudden sorry, it's like, gotta, okay, gotta go. He, no, didn't he tell you to leave? Yeah, he did. <laughs> Need to leave, and I was like, "What the hell? Like yeah. he's 
just not into so me. Rude. Yeah, and I was like, like oh my god, like that? he's not into me. Like, I of course me thinking it's like a, a yeah. me thing, right? What? So just so you know, like you know, if a guy just doesn't seem into you, he might just have diarrhea. Yeah, or IBS, like yeah. or both. I mean, you never Hot know. Guys have stomach problems too. They do. Yeah. And that- but yeah, oh it was God. literally like the funniest time yeah. ever. Like that was just like it. It would have been too perfect if people weren't shitting themselves. I know, I know, and it's such a good story. And like, I just feel, God, it was just so man. Good times, yeah. good times. But you don't like him anymore. No, I don't like him anymore. I think that he's a total weirdo. <laughs> he is. And I'm sure he's watching this, and I don't care. I think he treated you like donkey, donkey. What words am I saying today? <laughs> Dookie, whatever the fuck. <laughs> he's really weird. He's just weird, and like, and also just I don't know. Like we, oh, Ooh. oh, fuck. This is why I don't like him. This is, I mean, besides that too. But then this just really sent me the, over the fucking edge. So I invite him, Brian, and I invite him to our wedding. They were kind of friends, but not super close. But we were like, let's invite him. TK likes him. Like, it could be a whole love affair in Italy. They Y'all could fall were in really love. nice about that. And I was like, really. And we had, keep in mind, like, we had not invited a bunch of other people who were, like, close to us. But we invited this motherfucker. Okay, so <laughs> the whole wedding, like, he just does some really, really, should we talk about the weird things? Or, like, I was just going to talk about his mean comment about me. But I could also get into. He was just doing weird ass shit to weird me. Weird ass shit. Like, like, saying weird shit to me. Yeah, that's just like so many red flags, like beyond red, like a black flag. Like, you're just like, <laughs> I dead. Would, like, say, I didn't want to like bother Haley because you and Brian like really helped set it up. Yeah, yeah. With, uh, with other people. Yeah. But like, I, you know, she had been my girl beforehand being like, okay, he did this. And, you know, I would yeah. like update her on things. Yeah. But it was her wedding, so I didn't want to bother the hell yeah. out of her. But I would tell you things here and there, and you were like, that's weird. So. Yeah. Because he was like one of those that was like, love bomby, doing all these things, and then like, ghost. And then he'd be like, "Love." It's just like, bye. Yeah. So then, <laughs> um, but when really when I was like, "We're fucking done," um, was the day after our wine tour at our wedding. Yeah. We all came back and I chopped my hair because like I always keep my hair pretty short. But before the wedding, I tried to you have the out. best hair in the world. Like Thank the best. You. I love her short hair. It's literally the signature Haley Ringo price. Thank you. I Look. know you've only known me with short hair. Right? Yeah. I had long hair for like my whole life, but. Yeah. Anyways, so you've had your hair short though for years and years and no, years. No, like literally seven years. Yeah. <laughs> so I and this this guy does not know me very well, obviously. But but basically, we come back from the wine tour. I have my brides, one of my bridesmaids, chop my hair, and I go upstairs to like go out and be with everybody. Where we were, and where I was, they were standing, and I was with him and like a bunch of other people that were at the wedding. Yeah. And Haley comes down, like literally just got married. The only reason we're in Italy together, especially him, yeah, is because she's getting married and invited him or yeah. whatever. So she comes down, she's like flipping around her hair, and we're yeah. like, oh my god, it looks so good because it did. And you know what? Even if it even looked if it looked horrible, like shit, it's like, just like she's the bride. Like everyone's gonna be like, oh my god, it looks amazing. Yeah. Even if it looks like shit, which right. it didn't. So he like turns to the group of people I'm with, which by the way is literally like the groom sister, my sister in law, family friends, yeah. like my friends, yeah. like and says the most repulsive, embarrassing thing, like for me too. Like I was like, what the? Because technically he was like with me. Yeah. Like everyone associated us together. Yeah. Haley comes down, she's like, and we're like, oh my God, you know, she looks so amazing. She's flipping her hair and he goes, I don't know why girls think it's a good idea to like c- cut their hair like that. Like, by the way, like no one ever cut their hair like that. Guys don't like it. That's what he says. When I tell it's like you. like moment of silence for the, the. He goes, guys don't like it when girls cut their hair like that. Never cut it short. Like, aka, Haley looks like shit. I don't know why she thinks she should. Cut and this, her hair like that. Yeah. Also, literally, just like the audacity for this motherfucker to say that at my wedding, I about literally me, go, in front of my best friends and my sister in law, like what fucking idiot we brain. All, all the women are like, yeah. I mean, and all my friends are like such girls. Girls, they're like, bitch. What did you just I go, say? I go. In what world did you think she would, con- she or any woman would consider you when doing anything to their look? Like literally, yeah. I say that. Yes. And he was like, oh, oh. I, uh, 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 uh. Idiot. I can't. I, I can't. literally was like, I can't wait to no, tell Haley this. I know. And this was the final straw after he had, had done some weird yeah. ass shit beforehand. And he had done it like that says he had done even weirder stuff than that. So yeah. like this was just I was like, if you're gonna talk shit about he's me so in front dumb. of my Yeah, just like not there mentally. Anyways, so yeah, he's done with. But any I just like that was crazy. And one day we're gonna find you such a solid man. Margaret did say that he is, you know, maybe your man is just currently 
dating dating, someone. dating someone so it's just not the right time but you know he's out there yeah but all of that to say is pay attention to what mm, yes. someone you're dating or like seeing pay attention to how they treat other women yeah especially your friends yes because it's a reflection on how they'll treat you. Yes, and also just their character. Like, yeah. it's so crazy to me. Even if a guy friend that I wasn't affiliated with yeah. at all, any guy, if any guy said that and you came down, I would be like, "What? who the hell do you think you are? Yeah. It's so unattractive and I rude. I know. And like out of, out of pocket. Also, out yeah, of pocket. Yeah, what do you, what'd you think? Like, I'm not going to tell you? Yeah, I know, right? I know. Come on. Come on, dude. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, also too, like, Brian loves my fucking hair short, so I'm like... Who cares? Oh, I, I was like, "LOL at you not knowing this is literally Haley's normal haircut." Yeah, that's how that's how little I knew this guy. Yeah, and like we invited him out of the kindness of our hearts, and then and I then, and one of the girls was like, "Oh, thank God I just got my haircut before this the, trip." The best man's wife was yeah, like, "Literally, thank God I just cut my hair before this trip, you asshole!" Like, yeah, just like yeah, he had no he has no no business in your life. He's weird <laughs> as hell. He's but super yeah. weird. Yeah. Anyway, that that was like the final straw. With him. Yeah. That yeah I was yeah. like, yeah, I We're can't. Done. That was the deal breaker officially. But um, all of that to say is Haley has the best dating advice. <laughs> I feel like we've covered so many topics so and many so topics. many good things. Switching gears. <laughs> one thing that I wanted to hit on this podcast is one of my favorite nights I've ever had in my entire life, which was your bachelorette. Yeah. yeah. See, like, I'm so sad that you're married now because, like, now we don't have to go through all these things because I, as a guest, was just enjoying it all so much. <laughs> well, I'm like, we could we could do it again and just pretend like I'm not married for, like, a weekend. True. And be like, it's her bachelorette again. I guess we have my bachelorette to look yeah, forward to. Yeah, honestly. Eventually. And yours is going to be wild. and It will be wild. Be so I like what you did where you invited people other than bridesmaids. Oh, yeah. I had, well, we just have such a good girl, group of girls mm -hmm. and I wanted everybody's personalities there and I just, like, and it was just... That was the best, second best weekend of my entire life. But the the night I know you're going to reference is when we all dressed up like men, which was, this was well, our type, I should say. We dressed up as our yeah. type. And this was the best, second best night of my entire life. When I tell you I have never laughed harder in my entire life than when we were all dressed up. There, were, How many people were invited to your bachelorette? 24. I mean, that's insane. Yeah, it was, but it, and it Did worked. Did you think that was too many? No. No? <laughs> the more the merrier. <laughs> What was your thought process? I mean, it was stressful. I feel like planning the rooms and stuff kind of, but like not really. What was your thought process when it came to inviting people like who weren't in your bridal party to your bachelorette? Because like I wasn't in your bridal party, but yeah. I was invited to your bachelorette. I feel like, well, because I wanted to have 24 bridesmaids, but I couldn't. couldn't. And Brian <laughs> was only going to have like 10 groomsmen max. So I basically, I feel like a lot of my friends are all like equal, like on mm -hmm. equal level. And so- it was actually really hard to narrow down the bridesmaids list. And I just really wanted everybody that I'm friends with to be with me. And, and I wanted to celebrate with them. So that mm -hmm. was really that was really it. It was like, who do I love that I want to celebrate with that I know is going to have fun? And and that's who I invited. So I was just because I couldn't make everybody a bridesmaid. Having 24 bridesmaids would have been fucking crazy. Yeah. You had your bachelorette in Vegas. Yeah, baby. What were your favorite things we did in Vegas? I mean, dressing up as our type was like the. F we were the staying at the night. Wynn. That was the best night. We went to a Magic Mike show, which was the funniest shit ever. Ever dressed up as a man because we were dressed up as dudes. Yeah, when we dressed up as men, we were the most broy, broy guys yes. like you could imagine. Like we were like practicing our golf swings yeah. in the win lobby like we were like chugging beers, chugging beers we like, were going up and like chest bumping other yes, men you were w yeah yes, I was. that was hilarious <laughs> we were just like we were like what up like just like what a motherfucker like, like it was being just, the most bro -y, obnoxious like almost like frat bro yeah which was funny that we went to that character like yeah. it was like we couldn't just be normal dudes we had to be like the really like out we there. went all out we went all out and like i feel like that's our our friend group's personality type and, is like you just commit to the bit and what was so funny is like everyone had such a different type yeah oh my like God. so there were like you know construction worker yes. looking dudes like you you dressed up as brian so he was like i dressed up as diy brian yeah. so i had on his tool belt his mustache yeah aviators hat his like work boots and like jean jorts i dressed up as like a finance bro so yes. i had like slacks on i had like a patagonia jacket <laughs> i had like an aloe hat yeah. and like a stash and i had like a sock in my pants yeah 
Um, I went I super it. hard that way. And like other friends had like they really like guys with tattoos. So they had like full sleeves. Yes, tatted cigs. Our, like we had yeah, our other friend dressed up as like a skater dude, like and a then ski bomb. One of our friends dressed up as like a, these are not my words. TK just said like one of the comments said she like judged Judy, but <laughs> her type is very like theater. Metro, metro theater, theater, theater yeah, guy. Yeah. And so she, she <laughs> fully committed. It was absolutely hysterical one of our friends dressed up like justin bieber like with yeah, like purple the purple with and his, with the like, white yeah, yeah with his Which was microphone so funny. i mean it was we had a limousine that took us and like we were dancing like crazy and in there the were 24 of us All like dr- dressed up as men yeah and i'm not kidding you i've never gotten more attention from men no me dressed either up as a man. they loved it they were they, they were people were coming up to us like grown men like yes. hot guys were asking for photos with us yes 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 with their wives they yeah. were like can we get fo-? like it was that was literally the second best night of my entire life. Us dressing up as men was yeah. the funniest thing ever. And we fully not only dressed up, but we acquired their entire personality. Yeah, yeah. I lost my voice for, a, I'm not kidding, a week. <laughs> I had no voice for a week after my bachelor and party. all of the content we made about it went viral. Went viral because, and guys, if I, any, another piece of advice do this. Like, if you are girls and you want to go out, dress up as your fucking type. It is the funnest thing you will ever do. I've never felt more comfortable physically and non-physically, like, as a woman in Vegas. It felt very normal for me to be a man. Like, I literally was like, I can embody this. No heels, no tight dress. Yeah, I was like, this is amazing. Like, not being catcold. Yeah, amazing. What? Yeah. Feeling safe? Yeah, feeling safe. This is crazy. Feeling like I could run, just in case. <laughs> had a hammer with, I literally had a hammer on my tool yeah, belt, which is iconic. like, a, a, well, technically a weapon. Yeah. And they still let me in to everywhere, <laughs> which is crazy. We were literally popping Budweiser's in the middle of the Wynn hotel, in the middle of the Wynn casino. Yeah. And the people that worked there thought it was hilarious. No one cared. Oh, yeah. Like, we tagged them in these videos and they were like, oh. Yeah. It was the best (laughs) night ever. We were cracking up. And the best part was, is we were meeting, like, all of the people that were going to the Bachelorette were meeting for the first time so like i didn't even know what they looked like as a girl like once i saw their instagram i was like oh my god they're so pretty (laughs) but like we were all dressed up like we were committed yeah everyone had full beards yeah Yeah. and there was like how did you come up with the idea to dress up as men i feel i'm trying to remember like if my friend i feel like my friend taylor sent me something or told me something i feel like i'm gonna get this wrong but i honestly don't know like i don't know if i had seen something where they had done something similar and i was like okay let's maybe do it this way or if she told, I don't know. Honestly, I had no idea it was going to be that fun or that funny. <laughs> like, I was kind of like, oh, this is a weird theme for a yeah. bachelorette. Like, at first. Yeah. But then when we did it, I was like, this is the best bachelorette theme I've ever been yeah. a part of. Because we had, like, we had our nights where we, the night before that, we went out and, like, we're so sexy and cute and Vegas yeah. and whatever. And so I was like, we need something. Because I'm very, like off the cuff I just wanted to do something wild like I wanted to do something that norm- that wasn't like normal to a bachelorette party and it was such a fucking hit like, yeah and I just highly recommend I'm not kidding you like people to this day will ask me about it they'll be like who was your friend that did that like bachelorette theme like I want to do that it was, and you should you absolutely I will be should. doing it I please invite me <laughs> and it's even funnier I would say like in a big city like that where you're going out like yeah. if you went out on Broadway and Nashville doing that yeah, yeah, or yeah. like oh my god do somewhere like us going to the Magic Mike show was so funny because they would like pull people up on stage that looked like dudes yes and they were like lap dancing yes it was so good yes it was amazing that was so fun. but oh my yeah god. anyway Haley it has been an absolute treat having you here today i loved being on thank you for having me baby um i am so excited for you and brian to be moving soon yes i'll be back here part time i can't wait to hang with you more which will be so fun where can everyone follow you um Haley ringo price easy amazing and you guys i think she's going to eventually be dropping the print oh uh, yes the lion i am that's I will. in from uh, from our trip to africa the photo she took that's in my house and it's blown up yep so definitely follow her so you can keep up with that yeah. and you don't miss when she releases them. Yep. Thank you. Yes, yeah. we're going to be, I'll do a few prints from like, from that trip mm-hmm. that I'll release. But yeah, yeah absolutely the, the, should. The, and probably your Italy too. Yeah, and probably Italy too. Yeah. yeah. Ah! Which is awesome. Anyway, you can follow her there and where can they buy your presets? Um, You can buy my presets at HaleyRinRingo.com slash presets. But honestly, if you just go to my Instagram bio, um, everything find is everything. linked there. Yeah. And they're the easiest presets in the world. So you know that. So but, easy. Yeah. yeah. They will make your photos look. They're really easy. I made them like super user friendly. So you just really one click. And And they're not like chuggy, like bright. Oh, God. Yeah. Chuggy. That is just the worst word. They're not that at all. (laughs) Anyway, um, thank you guys for tuning in and be sure to make someone else's day this week. Love you guys so much. Bye. Bye. Love y'all. Bye.